Hey guys, Preston here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do a quick little video discussing Notre Dame's new... Sorry, got a pace for game on. I'm a little distracted. New defensive coordinator, Marcus Freeman. And kind of figure out just what he brings to this program. You know, I titled this video, Can Marcus Freeman Take the Pacers to the Next Level? Pacers. See, I'm already in my head. <laughs> Can Marcus Freeman take Notre Dame to the next level? Because that's something we've been talking about as Notre Dame fans for a while now. Is like, you know, we've been on the curb, like just below playoff greatness. We've made the playoff twice, which not a lot of teams have. Or one of the like four teams, I think. And it's like us in Oklahoma and Georgia are the ones who haven't won it, but we've been there, you know? And so we're on the precipice. I know we get made fun of sometimes, you know, Notre Dame does for for not winning these big games but like to be fair a lot of teams aren't and you know like this year for example we actually had the closest matchup against Alabama in the play we had the closest playoff game at all and it was still not close so like it was just a dominant year by team Ohio State beat up Clemson and then Alabama beat up Ohio State it was a circle but either way I do kind of just a quick answer be potentially Potentially, Freeman is the move you needed to take you to a higher level. And that's not to discredit what Corkley, our former D.C., did. He was very good at his job. We had a top defense. Honestly, our defense carried us most of the year. I mean, there's just, for example, there's a game against Louisville. We won 12-7. Uh, we needed a defense to hold Louisville to seven points, and that's what they did. There's lots, lots of stuff like that. He just didn't. The biggest difference between our new coordinator... And Freeman and our old one in Lee is recruiting. Freeman, when he got hired, and is, he's been known as a more than capable recruiter. I mean, just for an example, he recruited multiple four-star players to commit to Cincinnati in this 2020 Duke class. Some are leaving now, obviously, because Marcus Freeman left the job. But the fact he was able to get four-star defensive talents, like good ones too, not like low. Some of them were middle to high four-stars, not even all low four-stars which low four stars would have been impressive too, by the way, to commit to a group of five program, you know. And I think the AAC, AAC is a good conference, but it's not power five just by definition, you know. And the fact that he got multiple four stars to commit there over top schools just shows you something. The dude can recruit his butt off. And the fact is he's going to have even more, he's going to have better resources now at Notre Dame than he did at Cincinnati, you know, bigger program bigger budget, stuff like that, so he can really bring in some guys, man. His, he's sent out a bunch of offers already on defense. Most of them are talented, talented kids, and if we can start to land some of them, this can really help the program because, I mean, if you think about it, our defense was really good with working with what we got, too. I mean, a lot of three-stars still, especially in corners and some of the edge rushers. I mean, it was a four-star in Hayes, but Ade Ogundeji was a three-star originally committed to Western Michigan, you know, and big credit – Mike Elston and Lee and all those guys do a good job. They developed the defenders still. They developed and became very talented players, obviously. I mean, Lee, Ogundeji and Hayes will both be in the NFL. But the fact is, now picture if you could bring in a high four-star in Ade's place and you, develop, and you still develop him. You're starting with a higher ceiling, and then you can just go even higher. The floor is higher when you recruit better. That's basically my. That's how it works. You know, Obviously, people emphasize development a lot, and they should. But if your floor, if the kid comes in as a four-star compared to a three-star, they can go even higher. That's how it generally is, and of course, unless they're like misscouted or something. So like when we landed Tyson Ford already in this class, he is our highest-rated defensive end since 2013. I mean, it's just a good start. I want to credit to Elston too. He led that recruiting most of the time. But he, um, Ford was going to commit to Oklahoma like three days before he ended up committing to us, and. Uh, Freeman had a lot of doing keeping him with us and making sure he ended up a Notre Dame athlete. So that's huge. Obviously, it'll take time to pay off. Uh, you won't see it this year. Well, you might see a good performance this year. I don't know if we could be that much better than we were last year defensively because, like I said, we were really good defensively last year and we're losing a lot of starters. And so I wouldn't be shocked if the defense is slightly worse, but I think it would have been slightly worse with Lee, too. If anything, it might have a chance to be about the same, if not a little better, under Freeman. Freeman isn't just a recruiter. I know I'm excited about his recruitment, his recruiting skills, and I've talked about him because, well, I mean, it, heck, Notre Dame in their statement, Brian Kelly mentioned that they were looking for a guy who could recruit when they hired him, and, you know, he can do it. 
uh, from Buzz, I've seen Buzz from recruits. I don't get to talk to recruits directly. I'm not like, uh, you know, this isn't my full time. I don't get paid for this. So I'm not a recruiting coordinator or anything like that. But people whose job is to cover Notre Dame recruiting, you know, insiders for rivals, 247, et cetera, they've all mentioned that a lot of defensive prospects were excited about this hire, you know. And when you can get kids who are excited about who your defensive coordinator is, obviously that helps you out. I mean, it's just people want to play for this guy, and that just helps in general you know his attitude he's gonna coach he coaches on the field which i always like over people who coach from the sidelines which is i mean from the the press box which is what lee did to each his own i guess i mean it worked for us i don't i'm trying i don't want to harp on lee because he was good he was good obviously but I, I do think freeman can do even better and that's why i'm excited usually notre dame would probably just promote from within or find some guy no one was even thinking about but no we went out and landed the top defensive coordinator available Every school, literally, don't, this isn't an exaggeration when I say every school that had an open defensive coordinator spot wanted Marcus Freeman. <laughs> Texas, Michigan, LSU. LSU was the closest one that for a while there people thought he was like guaranteed to go to LSU. We did something to swoop in and get him. Shout out to Brian Kelly getting it done and the athletic director and all those guys. But we got it done, and it, it's nice to see that we landed a guy so we landed a top defensive coordinator. Now let's hope that the top defensive coordinator can land us top defensive players. Uh, Ford is top 10 in this position on rivals. Top 5, no, top 5 on rivals, top 10 on 247. He's a top 100 player on rivals and just outside the top 100 on the 247 composite. Highly talented, and if we keep landing guys like this, the future is definitely bright. Only thing that sucks is that Freeman probably won't be here long uh he part of his move up from cincinnati as he he really liked that cincinnati job had a good relationship with their head coach and luke fickle but part of his reason for moving to us was to increase his odds of becoming a head coach and so if he does really well here you know it's likely he will get a head coaching opportunity pretty soon my only hope is that i really hope we can get him for at least two seasons that way we can get two recruiting classes in especially this 2022 class, which is, if it can be huge for us, you know, in the long run, recruiting these guys will pay off, even if we have to use a different defensive coordinator to develop them, you know, just getting them in the building is huge. Obviously, this doesn't affect offense recruiting. We still need more, you know, outside of offense linemen and tight end. We got to start getting some really good guys around them, some skill guys, etc. But defensively, this is huge, and maybe it can help close the gap we have between some of these top offenses because for example if he can recruit the secondary which he has a linebackers background like lee does he's going to coach linebackers which is awesome to get good linebackers too but just recruiting if we recruit better in general and that means we recruit corners better where for the most part we land a bunch of three stars if we can land some four stars i mean god willing a five star or two on this defense especially in that secondary that'd go a long way playing teams like alabama where you have to face nfl wide receivers every time you know it's, it was tough for our corners. It showed. It was really tough for them to stop guys like Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle, etc. So if we can just get the talent in, it'll be huge for us. That's all I'm saying. It, it just makes sense. Um, now, I forgot to mention in the first place, I'll go in a little bit about Freeman's background. I kind of mentioned already, like I said, what excites me the most about him is his recruiting. But he also ran one of the top defenses in the country at Cincinnati. It was a, Obviously, he was a group of five school but he still shut out teams with the talent he had. And obviously, if you ask me, Cincinnati's defense is less talented than Notre Dame's defense was last year. Just based, It's just that, obviously, even Notre Dame with Lee recruited better than Freeman could possibly expect to do at a small, smaller school like Cincinnati. So I think it's also encouraging to see that at Cincinnati he was running top defenses because it shows he can do more with less which obviously want him to do more with more now which he can like i said he can recruit better at notre dame than he probably could at cincinnati which is just exciting but like it's just the truth you know it was a good showcase at cincinnati for him that he can get it done with whoever he has which just has me encouraged for this current season because like i said we got some roster turnover but i trust he can he'll play to our strengths uh use the guys we have and take advantage of their skill sets he's shown to be able to do that he's a real smart coach and he knows what he's doing so just quickly his his background for you guys in case you wanted to know he went to college at ohio state he played i never got to watch him but he played linebacker for ohio state actually he was a highly recruited prospect high four star kind of five star kind of kid 
was ended up drafted in the fifth round in the NFL draft in 2009, where he stuck around for a season basically on practice squads and offseason only. And then he jumped right into coaching after that, becoming a graduate assistant for the Buckeyes for a year. Then moved on to linebackers coach for Kent State for two seasons, Purdue for two seasons, and was the co-defensive coordinator and linebackers coach at Purdue in 16 before he got the job from Fickle to be their D.C. and linebackers coach in 2017. And every year under Freeman, that Cincinnati defense got better. They really turned that program around. They weren't that good in 17, and they made them to what they are, which is a powerhouse in the group of five. I mean, they were a top-10 team this year, and it's just impressive. And anytime you can get a coach from one of those staffs where they take a small school and turn them around, you know there's talent there. Uh, he's young. Obviously, at, he's only 35 years old, which is young for a coach. I mean, he could technically run for president age-wise, but that's that's young for a coach for sure, uh, which is always – I think younger coaches are just a nice thing. Obviously, they tend to be able to re- relate with players more, even though obviously 35 and like a 19-year-old have some differences. He's t- Just in coach standards, he's a younger guy. They tend to have a more fresh outlook on things. They're not s- set in their ways all the time. I do think – Something Freeman has shown is he can change up his personnel and the way he runs his defense on a game-by-game basis. So he plays to the strengths to eliminate other teams' strengths, obviously. So like if he plays a passing tech game, he can run a defense with more second, like dime packages. And, okay, obviously a lot of defenses do dime packages. I'm, I'm kind of just rambling here. But basically he's versatile. I'll say that. he's versatile. He's not like just 3-4 every time, no matter what, every game. He can mix it up if he wants to. Um, he's, he's a good player, a good coach. I should say I'm excited. I think everyone was excited about the hire. I think it's starting to pay off. Like I said, with Tyson Ford, who I'll probably make a video about too, just discussing how good he will be. Like I said, highest rated defensive end recruit since 2013. And if that's just the start of what Freeman brings to this program, I'd be excited if I wasn't, if you're an Irish fan, I am an Irish fan, not was, I <laughs> I am an Irish fan, I'm very excited about what Freeman brings to this team, I do, I honestly think he can elevate this team even more than what it was, we've been making playoff appearances, but now we need to make a push for a, t- for a title, it's time, sorry if I'm a bit rambly, I'm a, I'm a little tired, it's late when I'm recording this, but I just felt like I should get a video out about this, because I didn't do it when he was hired initially, but it was a great move by this coaching staff. I want to give a lot of credit to Kelly and the athletic director because this is a great hire. I mean, we stole him away from an, from LSU, which is a program that recruits great every year and is in the SEC and has plenty of money to spend. So just it's huge that we were able to land him. Uh, just excited about what he brings in the future. Let me know what you guys think about this hire, if there's anyone else you would have had instead. I'm pretty sure most people agree that this was the best defensive, literally the best defensive coordinator available, and that Notre Dame could land them was impressive. So... Uh, I look forward to seeing what he can do for this 2022 recruiting class. Once this 2021 class is officially fully signed and wrapped up in February, which is the last signing day, I believe, I'm going to make a video looking at the whole 2021 recruiting class and what they bring to this team as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, This is KMA Preston. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like this video and just keep track of my channel for more Notre Dame-related content. I also do Pittsburgh Steelers and Indiana Pacer, Pittsburgh Penguins content, sometimes big news and sports in general. But either way, thanks again, guys. Uh, This is KMA Preston signing out.